Hey everyone, ready for another deep dive. Today we're tackling something that uh, I think a lot of Excel users run into. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's about refreshing data in Excel online. You know how like you want that smooth online collaboration. For sure. But then you hit a wall when you try to refresh those power queries. Yep, that can be a real headache, especially when you're trying to keep those shared workbooks up to date. Exactly. And thankfully somebody's figured out a really neat workaround. Oh, tell me more. So we're diving into this YouTube tutorial from Analysis Cloud IT Vlog. Okay, I've seen some of their stuff. They're pretty good. Yeah, they are. And what's really cool about their solution is that it actually takes us outside of Excel entirely. Really? Yeah. yeah that's interesting. You've got my attention. Right. I was surprised too. So to understand this better, we need to lay out the problem first. The video starts by talking about shared workbooks. Okay, yeah. Those are super useful for teamwork, but they can be a bit of a data minefield sometimes. Right. Yeah. Like you get multiple people working on the same file. Maybe some are on the desktop app. Others are online. Mm -hmm. Recipe for disaster sometimes. Conflicts, errors, you name it. Even file corruption in the worst cases. Oh, I've been there. It's a real pain. And it all boils down to this challenge of how do you keep everyone on the same page data-wise without breaking the workbook? Makes sense. Consistent data is key but so is a stable file. And this is where the current limitation of Excel Online becomes a major roadblock. So you can't directly refresh Power Queries in Excel Online. Ah, uh, yeah, I've bumped into that myself. So if your data is coming from a Power Query, you're kind of stuck. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which might make you think, well, that's it, game over. But this is where it gets interesting. Okay, I'm all ears. What's the magic trick? It's not so much a trick, but a really smart use of other tools that Microsoft gives us. Okay, fill me in. It's all about data flows and Power Automate. Now, have you had a chance to play around with those at all? Uh, a little bit with data flows, not so much with Power Automate. I know it's super powerful though. Yeah, it is. And in this case, it's like data flows becomes your Power Query workhorse online. So it's basically doing what Power Query does, but doing it in the cloud. Exactly. It handles all the data transformation behind the scenes. And then Power Automate is like this clever messenger that takes that transformed data and puts it back into your Excel online workbook. I see. So instead of making Excel do everything, we're splitting the tasks up. Right. It makes the whole process more flexible and less prone to those errors we were talking about. And the beauty is for the person using the Excel file, it just works. They see the data refresh like magic. Now, to really see this in action, Let's use the example from the YouTube video. Imagine you're tracking weekly sales data, let's say for different Microsoft products. Okay, yeah, I can picture that. Something lots of companies would need to do. And let's say you've got product owners adding comments to the data, and then you need to refresh this table every week to share with like the executives or something. Pretty typical scenario. So instead of having all that action happening directly in the Excel workbook, we'd shift that data work to data flows, right? Right. But where does data flows get that raw data from? <laughs> I remember them mentioning something called Dataverse in the video. Oh, good point. Yeah, Dataverse is like this central data hub within the Microsoft Power Platform. Okay, so you can think of it as this container that can hold all sorts of information from lots of different sources. Right, super versatile. So in our example, the data flow would be pulling that weekly sales data from a Dataverse table. Makes sense. What happens next? Well, just like you do with Power Query, the data flow can do all sorts of transformations, like calculate new numbers from the data, mm. merge it with data from other places. Okay. Really anything you can do with Power Query, but online. Wow. So data flows is like our cleaning crew, getting the data ready for prime time. But how does it make its way back into our Excel online workbook? That's where our friend Power Automate comes in. Remember that refresh button in Excel? Yeah, of course. Well, that can actually trigger a Power Automate flow. Oh, so clicking that button sets off this whole chain reaction behind the scenes. Exactly. The flow kicks things off by telling the data flow to go and transform the data. I'm starting to get it now. The data flow does its thing, but there was also this interesting bit in the video about a delay built into the flow. Oh yeah, that's important. They put in a three minute delay. Why is that? It's like a pause. It gives the data flow enough time to finish its work, you know? Data flows can take a bit of time, right? Yeah especially if you've got loads of data or complex transformation. Exactly. So it's like giving the data flow a chance to catch its breath before moving to the next step. Precisely. It keeps everything in sync. Okay, so let's say the data flow has finished its transformation. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Well, now Power Automate comes back into play. It grabs that transformed data from the Dataverse table. Okay, and then it puts it back into Excel online. 
But what about the data that was already in the sheet? How does it handle that? Good question. Before it writes the new data in, Power Automate uses something called an Office script to clear out the old data from the Excel online table. An Office script? That sounds pretty techy. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. It's just a little helper that automates things inside Excel. In this case, it's a simple script to clear the table and make room for the fresh data. Okay, that makes sense. So we've got a blank table ready in Excel online, the data flow has done its work, and Power Automate is standing by with the new data. How does it all come together in the end? Well, this is the grand finale. Power Automate takes that fresh data from Dataverse and carefully writes it into the Excel table row by row. And just like that, the Excel online workbook is updated with all the latest info. Amazing. Uh -huh. All without even touching the desktop app. Yep. Pretty cool, huh? That's really impressive. But I have to admit, it sounds pretty complex. Is this something anyone can set up? Or do you need to be, like... A tech wizard that's a great question and it's something we'll definitely explore more in the next part of our deep dive we'll look at what this all means and how it fits into the bigger picture of data management sounds good stay tuned everyone we're just getting started welcome back everyone i don't know about you but my mind is still buzzing from that data flows and power automate combo we just uncovered it is a pretty slick way to refresh data in excel online and you know what I think we've only scratched the surface of what's possible with this approach. That's exactly what I was thinking. The YouTube video focuses on weekly sales data, but the underlying concept seems way more versatile, right? Oh, absolutely. This isn't just about fixing one specific problem. It's about rethinking how we handle data in the online world when everyone's collaborating. Right. Like it's a whole new mindset for data workflows. Mm -hmm. So what other workflows do you think could benefit from this outside the box approach? Hmm. Well, let's see. Think about something like, uh, project management. You've got a project budget in Excel online, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got multiple team members all needing to update it with their expenses, their progress, whatever. Yes, sounds familiar. So instead of everyone fighting over the same workbook and risking all those conflicts and errors, we could use Dataverse. Now you're getting it. It's like giving each team member their own little sandbox in Dataverse to manage their part of the budget. Ooh, I like that. Individual workspaces. So then how would we bring it all back together? A data flow, of course. It could pull all that data from those separate workspaces. Do any calculations needed to consolidate the budget? Maybe even flag if someone's about to go over budget. And then, just like in the sales data example, Power Automate would jump in, refresh the data flow, and write those final budget numbers back to the main Excel online workbook. Boom, you've got it. That main workbook stays clean. It's the single source of truth for the whole project budget. No more version control headaches, no more worrying about someone accidentally messing things up. It's like having a whole data management team working behind the scenes, mm -hmm. keeping everything tidy without us even having to lift a finger in Excel online. You're getting the picture. And we're not limited to budgets either. What about, let's say, customer feedback? You're tracking that in Excel online, right? Mm -hmm. Data flows could analyze the sentiment, pick out themes, even create charts and graphs from it. Oh, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Instead of spending hours going through tons of comments, the data flow does the hard work. Power Automate delivers those beautiful insights straight to my Excel online dashboard. Exactly. Excel online goes from being a static spreadsheet to this dynamic platform for exploring data. It really highlights the beauty of using all the tools Microsoft gives us, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just stuck in Excel anymore. You've got data flows, Power Automate, Dataverse, even those office scripts all working together. And the cool thing is these tools are getting better and more connected all the time. Who knows what we'll be able to do in the future? I can already imagine how this kind of approach could totally change how people work with data. It's all about breaking down those walls and letting everyone access the insights they need. You said it, democratizing data making it easier for everyone to make smart decisions. Okay, so we've seen how powerful this solution can be in different situations. But now I'm wondering about the practicalities. How easy is it for someone to actually set this up? Do you need to be like a coding expert? That's a great question. And it's a perfect segue into the final part of our deep dive. We'll tackle the technical aspects, the potential challenges, and point you to some resources to help you get started. Awesome, sounds good. Stay with us, everyone. We're about to give you the knowledge you need to bring this powerful approach to life in your own work. All right, welcome back to our deep dive. We've explored some pretty cool stuff with data flows and Power Automate. Like who knew you could do so much with refreshing data in Excel Online? It has been quite a journey, hasn't it? But let's shift gears a bit and get practical. 
For those ready to implement this, what are the key things to consider? That's the big question, right? Mm -hmm. I bet our listeners are eager to hear about the nitty gritty. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is data security. You know, we're dealing with data that could be sensitive. So making sure we have the right permissions and access controls is absolutely critical, especially in Dataverse and Power Automate. That makes sense. You don't want just anyone triggering data refreshes or messing with your data flows. Exactly. You need to think carefully about who needs access to what and why. Thankfully, Microsoft gives us some pretty robust security features in these tools. Okay, security, check. Now let's talk tech skills. What should our listeners know before they dive in? Well, if you're already comfortable with Power Query and Excel, you'll have a good foundation for data flows. They're pretty similar. So those Power Query skills are transferable. That's great. What about Power Automate? It seems a bit more uh, intimidating, maybe. Power Automate can seem a bit daunting at first, yeah. But Microsoft has actually made it surprisingly user-friendly. Oh, good. That visual interface is really intuitive. You can build flows by dragging and dropping things. You don't have to be a coding whiz. That's a relief. Plus, there are tons of resources online, right? Tutorials, templates, all sorts of stuff to help people get started. You got it. Don't be afraid to just jump in and experiment. Start with a simple flow, get the hang of the interface, and then gradually make things more complex as you get more confident. That's great advice. So speaking of challenges, what are some common pitfalls people might stumble upon with this solution? Hmm, let me think. One thing that trips people up sometimes is data mapping. You have to make sure the data fields in your Dataverse table perfectly match the columns in your Excel online table. Ah, right, otherwise things could get messy. Yeah, you could end up with mismatched data or errors when you try to refresh. So take your time, double check everything lines up correctly. It'll save you a lot of headaches down the road. What about that three minute delay we talked about yeah. before? Is that a set and forget it thing or does it need adjusting? That's a great question. Yeah, you might need to tweak that delay. Like if your data flow takes longer than three minutes to run, right. you'll need to adjust the delay and power automate to match. Otherwise, it might try to grab data from Dataverse before it's actually ready, and that could cause problems. So finding the right delay is crucial, especially as your data flows get more complex. Exactly. And keep in mind that the time it takes for a data flow to refresh can change depending on things like how much data there is to process and how good your internet connection is. So it's important to keep an eye on things and make adjustments as needed. Absolutely. Now here's another tip. Test, test, test. Before you unleash this solution on your real data, Run it through its paces. Mm -hmm. Make sure your data flow works, the Power Automate flow is doing what it's supposed to, and that Office script is behaving itself. And make sure it all works together smoothly, even if there are errors. Always good advice. Start with a small sample data set, work out any kinks, and then go for it. Right. Oh, and don't forget about documentation. As you build the solution, write down each step, mm -hmm. like what your data mappings are, how the flow works, any special tweaks you made? I know, documentation isn't the most exciting part, but it's so important. Trust me, it's a lifesaver when you need to fix something or change things later on. Plus, with good documentation, you can easily share your solution with others. That's true. So we've come full circle. We started with this annoying problem of refreshing data in Excel Online, found this clever solution, mm -hmm. explored how powerful it can be, yep. and now our listeners are armed with the knowledge to go and implement it themselves. I'd say we've had a pretty successful deep dive. I think what we've really seen is that when you start thinking beyond just one tool and you embrace how all these different parts of the Microsoft world can work together, the possibilities are really amazing. Absolutely. It shows how thinking creatively and going beyond the usual way of doing things can lead to some really powerful solutions. Mm -hmm. It's like we can overcome limitations and unlock amazing potential if we just think outside the spreadsheet. And you know, being able to refresh data seamlessly in Excel Online, it opens up so many opportunities for better collaboration, reporting, making decisions based on data. It's really exciting to see how these tools are empowering people to do more with their data. As we wrap up, I just want to encourage everyone listening to stay curious and keep experimenting. Don't be afraid to try new things and push those boundaries. The future of data is out there waiting for you. And remember, the most important tool you have isn't some fancy software, it's your own willingness to learn and explore. Keep asking those questions, keep challenging the way things are done, and keep pushing the limits of what you can achieve with data. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Excel Online. Until next time, happy analyzing.